And now for the final evaluation from the semi-brev group, we have got Peter's score. And Peter, I really enjoyed a lot of the little twists and turns. And I kind of get the sense, sort of listening to that ending part, that you kind of ran out of time. <laughs> and and so I'm just going to be completely fair about that and and not be too harsh about some of the missing material. But I will talk a little bit about how you could possibly uh, fill some things in, right? That's um, when I get something that feels a little incomplete, I have a tendency to just make suggestions about how to continue on. So uh, first of all, let's talk about a few notation standards here. Now, you very obligingly left a... Um, a harp pedal diagram, and the harpist can definitely use that. Some harpists prefer to write everything out, um, you know, all, all their accidentals out in a little box or you know in a in just a little something on the score. Just tells them where to set their pedals. Some of them like the diagram. But here's the thing: that if you have this diagram, you do not need this. You do not need this at all. These little. Um, added accidentals and little tiny note heads and everything else, right? You just absolutely don't need them. All you need is the first note and the last note. And um, then, you know, of course, like if you're working in Sibelius, the uh, Harp uh, Glissando plugin to help express all of the notes. And that's all you need. And, and you notice how this is sort of distorting the justification, the horizontal justification of some of your bars. Right, and that will just go away if you just have your notes as endpoints. Uh, I really like the idea of downward glissandos. That's one of my favorite things. Like it's it's so rarely used and it's so effective. Of course, you don't want to overdo that either, right? So yeah, so if you're using these uh, diagrams, the message is you don't need to write in the accidentals, and in fact, you don't need to write in the accidentals any any time. Right? Like this in this little, all you need is the diagram and a straight line that says glissando. Right? <clears throat> okay, so um, having said that, um, I have been a bit on a diatribe lately about the use of harp. Um, you know, after I sort of made a few comments about harp getting buried and, and all this other kind of stuff in the... 12 common scoring errors, I still saw a lot of harp that was scored in fortissimo passages in ways that couldn't be heard. Right? Okay. Um, and here is a situation where the scoring can be heard. Um, and it can be heard in the, um, in the mock-up, basically, because you've left a huge amount of space, <laughs> acoustic space. There's nothing but the violins and the arpeggio from the harp right there. However, marking it mezzo forte, I feel, is an error. This should be marked like forte or fortissimo, okay? And you should have a nice big slur over it in both cases. So, um, yeah, so like the harp shouldn't be softer than the strings. The harp should be louder than everybody else. The marking should be louder if you want things to balance. The glissando will certainly be heard. This really no big deal here. I think these will also be heard, but just you know, mark it up dynamically, and then you'll get a better balance. All right. So <clears throat> I'm also going to discuss the how the website entry or the the A section entry uh, evaluation criteria apply to this. However, let's talk a little bit about this really fun idea, right? It's it's almost like a um, an expansion of the whole idea of the grace notes into these little figures. Bam, 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 da, 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 da. <clears throat> so I feel that they work really, really well, but it's a little unclear here. I think maybe did you get the slur wrong, possibly, or slur and then staccato? It's different in two different places. So it needs to be the same in both places. Um, I almost feel like you need more to differentiate it from what happens afterwards, whether that is um, 
firming it up with more doubling from your winds or whether that is making it staccato accents or something like that but it just i think you've got this yeah right it's like i don't know where the melody is half of, half of my ear doesn't 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 detect a big difference between the figures and the melody right so i think we need more differentiation between those two elements okay so having said that let's talk about the um, the evaluation criteria. So the first one is pitch weight in the upper middle register of the piano. You get around that all over the place. That is not a big concern for you and your interpretation. All right, so we won't worry about that. Thematic material repeats often, possibly sounding repetitive if orchestrated the same way throughout. You did not orchestrate anything the same way throughout. Okay, uh, and good for you. Uh, but I mean, sometimes it gets a little barren, like right in here. I, you know, I feel like you know you wanted you wanted some variation here, but we're losing support, right? The the overtones from the trumpets are not enough to replace what was going on before. Okay, now um, melodic development soaring quite high. You you compensated for a lot of those things. Um, you know, piccolo right in there, and so on. Um, I think that you could have easily had your first violin doubling the flutes, right? And then maybe jumping up to the F right in here um, to just to guide the line back down to the swirling, right? I really love the swirling, by the way. Now, if you had sort of left off the... Um, if you had left off this sort of yump, 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 yump in the second violins because you had finished this phrase, well, there's no need to worry about that. You just start on the second beat and drop them back in. Bum, 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 right? Um, if you had left them out because you were concerned about the trumpets getting in the way, don't worry about that. Um, just bulk up that line with, um, say, English horn or something like that and put that in in the, in the beginning part as well, right? Okay, um, so accompaniment figures covering a wide range. This is all totally playable. You've got a lot of open strings happening there in the double bass. And then right in here, also the um, we've got open strings in the cellos, right? So it's, it's all totally doable and no big deal at all. Um, and I mean, even if, if there weren't open strings, it would still be, it would still be playable, but it's just a question of, you know, whether or not this tempo gets really pushed and the players are not really practiced up, right? I mean, that shouldn't be the hugest concern, but you should still be thinking about not making things too difficult arbitrarily, right? Okay, um, and then, of course, there that is there's variance between those parts as well, to a degree. Um, uh, you, you know, you certainly can tell hear the difference between the doubling from the winds here and then the no doubling from the winds right in there. I feel if you're going to take that tack, then you need to make something more special about the strings. If you really want to bring that, bring out that flavor of string scoring, then you've got to do something like maybe having um, octave doubling in the in the first and seconds right in here to just really give it more of a string character, or maybe more harmony from the strings, or or like maybe combining string and horn kinds of. Um, activity right in here just something to to bring out that the flavor of that section uh, to contrast it one against the other right but look i i really do like the idea of you throwing in the trumpets in here they're just a little undefined you know are they staccato are they like a background part do they slur i mean what is what is it about them you know how do they fit into the music when you've got all these accents and you know this this more furious playing coming from the strings and and definitely leaving in a bit a few different holes now here um i just really don't see any reason for the seconds to do anything right in here to take away from the first right there's you know maybe you sort of wanted the sound of it to travel from one group of instruments to the other on the stage um but that kind of has sort of a limited utility really you know well you ended up sort of just losing an element of harmony right in there uh and look if you're just really determined to trade that off then gosh darn it you should give 
this part to whichever instrument is not being engaged, right? So the second violins could just pick up on the second beat with that, and then the first violins could drop down and then start playing it too, right? So yeah, so don't like, you know, don't take apart so much of the texture of your arrangement that it starts to become barren. And, you know, perhaps like once again, you might be thinking, well, the trumpets kind of fill in that hole a little bit and that's why I put them in there, but it's still not enough in terms of the color, right? The color is now absent. And, you know, speaking of color, like you drop out your winds right in here going forwards. And while I totally applaud the whole idea of the, you know, of avoiding these thematic gestures being identical from place to place, there really is a, a, a gap, right? The audience is going to feel that kind of loss. And they might even say things like, oh, it's sort of just felt like it kind of came apart a little bit, you know, towards the end there. I couldn't really, you know, feel, felt like the orchestra was less full, right? So maybe there are ways of bringing the winds in like the lower winds are barely doing anything. Maybe they could be helping out, like rather than the horns, as I was suggesting, maybe the uh, lower winds could be supplementing some things, like maybe some staccato from bassoon and contrabassoon and some of these figures. Maybe some staccato from the bassoon and contra bassoon doubling some of this um, pizzicato and then arco down here. <clears throat> it's a little stompy, like these. Did, did you notice that the uh, in your your mock up the cellos were just really going bum 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 bum? You know, it was it. You know, and that is that is possibly what it is going to sound like. Though it's kind of hard to tell. The dynamics are a little sparse, right? So. Um, yeah, so so just, you know, watch out for for that. Maybe this is an indication that there needs to be a little bit more um a more a little bit more in terms of central scoring here to fill in what's going on cuz like right here you just basically have your melody going upwards. You have some kind of stompy uh lower strings and there's kind of no middle voice whereas if you look at the um if you look at the the score, the original piano score, you know, we've got um, <clears throat> uh, that yeah, bah, 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 da, 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 kind of um, stuff going on in the uh, in the right hand above middle C, right? So maybe that could be introduced back in. Maybe that could be played by clarinet doubling uh, violas or something, you know, but there just needs to be a little bit more in in the center here. Now we're getting to ba 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 da 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 dum, and you're saying non divisi here. That's all totally doable. Um, uh, it might be it, to to be completely frank with you, it might be easier just to do these as e octaves for your first violins, right? Because they're just going yippa ba ba da 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 dum, and then they can just add the e as an octave below, and then they can just then the second violins can just go you know C B B flat A, right? It's just an easier way of doing this, I I would say. You know, that way you stay away from the perfect fifth, and then, because like, um, you should check out. I've got a chapter in one hundred more orchestration tips where I talk about problems like this, where you're starting off with a sixth, and then you go to a fifth where the fingers like this, where the sixth is just the easiest interval to to finger in a in a double stop, right? Because you've got the the fingers are progressively farther apart with the uh, higher one a little bit in front of the lower one. Now, when you get to the fifth, the uh, higher finger has got to to um, sort of squish together so that they are completely, they're totally parallel together. And, and you get the intonation problems sometimes and when you're going really fast. And then here you're asking them to go to the left right? So they would have to just suddenly switch around the position of their fingers. So that the, um, in this case, like say the third finger, which would, which had been playing the high notes would suddenly be playing the low note and the second finger, or excuse me, I, I'm thinking in piano fingers. Let's try this again. Okay. Shall we? So, <coughs> uh, the second finger, which we would also call the middle finger will be playing these upper notes and the first finger, which you might call the pointer, is going to be playing the lower notes. But when you get to here, you have to flip those back and forth, right? And there's some, you know, of course, a section player, they do stuff like that all the time. But isn't it easier just to have three E octaves in a row from your firsts and then have the 
a second is just kind of play this. It's just just as basic as basic can be, right? Okay, so uh, da 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 yeah ba da da dum, and I, I like you th sort of throwing in a little bit of counterpoint in there. That's really fun, and some brass support. And I, I just sort of feel like at this point. Yeah, ba 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 bum ba 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 bum. There just really could have been a lot more integrated scoring in here, especially considering all the stuff that's in the piano part. You know, those um, those grace noted uh, fifths and octaves and a fifth, that kind of chords and so on. All the extra little notes um, in the right hand. <coughs> I think you missed an opportunity in here. Maybe you got distracted by this little contrapuntal line and. And then maybe you ran out of time after that, right? So it sort of feels <laughs> the the end of this page sort of feels like you ran out of time. So um, so like nothing nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Um, I, I I appreciate that. Uh, like like I said, I'm totally gonna go easy on you for for a lot of this stuff. And this is kind of fun in here. You've thrown in sort of your own little. Um, secondary line and so on uh, so so yeah i mean it's it's just a really fun score pater and and it, it you know it's the you know the shame of it <laughs> right uh, i wouldn't be hassling you about not being you know competent at orchestration i would just be more hassling you about not sending me a more fully orchestrated page Right, and just kind of saying, you know, oh, don't leave this to the last minute, you know, and you know, send me something that has got that where you filled things out, you transcribed more of the original piano part, um, you've had a chance to think about the coloration and about maybe some technical problems and and you know the differentiation of the melodies that really coming through there, you know, bye 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 bye, you know, is that is that enough rather than maybe dia 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 pa 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 right just like really this is the melody um i feel that it sort of needs that emphasis in places anyhow but you know all that aside it's just so you know it's just so fun to look at your score and to you know and like to read your comments on these other scores and so on and and to you know have you participate uh in any way that you have the time for you know you sometimes <clears throat> I, I'll get an incomplete entry from somebody uh, who is actually really at the top of their game as an orchestrator or composer. Sometimes they're like a composition teacher. Uh, sometimes they're working like making commercials and, you know, they're and like they're going to conduct an orchestra to do like an ad for Juicy Fruit Gum next week. You know what I mean? And so like they're working on this orchestration for me and they send it to me and there's like a lot of stuff missing out. And I'm kind of thinking, oh, geez, you know, couldn't we have a little bit more of this and that? And they'll say, oh, geez, you know, I guess I did want to do that. But I had this, you know, I... Uh, they called me back in for an extra rehearsal or they, you know, they didn't like the way the first one went. I had to go and record the whole damn thing again. And, and I'm really sorry. Right. So, so I'm not going to get on anybody's case about being a little incomplete in, in some of the submissions, but, but still, I just, you know, I enjoyed the hell out of looking at this and talking about it. And I think there's so many strong imaginative ideas that just like the little fragments that are in here. Um, I, I think you would have worked out a lot of what I said without the, you know, without the the commentary, um, frankly. And then I'd have e have even more things to hassle you about. So, <laughs> so once again, thank you so much, Peter. It it was a joy to look into this and to dig it dig it up into it and take it apart. And uh, I really really hope ex to express this as I have expressed in uh in other entries um just really just trying to imagine how you would approach next year's entry <clears throat> which i've already picked and and i think is going to be uh, you know it's just going to add to all of the innovation that we've had in the past lily boulanger and musorsky's um the seamstress and ravel's um uh, ode to Borodin and so on that all of these things that we've taken apart like uh, Bartok's um, uh, of uh, drums and pipes I think I think that this is going to be of a character with the kind of 
you know, the, the real gems that I've been able to come across. And it will have a dimension to it that's completely different from most of what we've done before. And I would be really love to see you dig into that. So, so thank you, Peter. Thank you, everybody out there for uh, watching these videos. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. And, you know, please leave comments below. They really make it worthwhile for me to continue doing this, even if it's just, um, you know, a kind word about how you enjoyed something or a suggestion. In this case, you might say, oh, you know, just think about maybe putting in some trombones in there a little bit. Or, you know, you might have a few suggestions of your own out there, my viewer. So, um, so thanks for all of that. And I will be seeing everybody really soon for the dotted semi-brev entries, of which there are quite a few.